But first, how many of you out there are 100 years old? More than you might think. National statistics say there are 14,000 centenarians in the UK. And that's enough to fill the Birmingham arena. Wow. Yeah, although presumably they need a lot more toilets. The latest addition to that exclusive 100 Club received her telegram from the Queen this very morning. And as her granddaughter writes, she's a big fan of this show. Oh, here's what she wrote. 20 seconds. Where's my fucking water? I made it very clear I need a glass of water after exercise or else white saliva forms at the corners of my mouth. Well, whose is this? That's mine now. Careful, it's fizzy. What? And I'm delighted to say Rose Haig joins us on the line now. Rose, are you there, my love? Well, of course I'm here. Where else would I be? Rose, many congratulations. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> congratulations. <coughs> Hello? <coughs> There we go. Rose, can you tell us where... No, leave it here. Here. Because if you leave it there, I can't reach it, you stupid girl. Rose, I believe your father was a, a captain now, stationed course, in the I army. I grew up in the Raj, 1930s. Yes. Mm. It's perfectly pleasant. Uh, one can be rather misty-eyed. Uh, uh, of course, the hangover was rather botched. Mountbatten did what he could. Poor old Dickie, Ratchet. That's lovely. I was just so wondering, wondering about uh, the secret to your old age. I'm talking, young man. Right. You normally interrupt people when they're speaking. I've been called a young man for quite some time. Stop I'm... mumbling. Why are you staring at me? What's your name? I'm a portrait. The point being, we had a houseboy. Not a friend, you understand, an right. employee. Okay. He used to run errands, <laughs> and we called him Brownie. Right. Not the sharpest of fellows, but curiously, he was not an Indian. Okay. He was a Negro. And they are very different, because uh, whilst physically stronger, they... Yeah. Oh. Oh dear, uh, we seem right. oh we seem to yeah. be we seem to have lost Rose there. But yes, a great achievement and a colourful character. Yeah. Different times, different times, and uh, so apologies there for the wind and the racism. So the, so rare birds' eggs are being scrambled for Russian oligarchs, and Bill Oddy goes ape shit. He shows up at Claridge's wearing his twitchers jerkin, and the pockets are full of every conceivable explosive. I got the picture. He walks in to the uh, buffet area, the breakfast buffet. People turn round, they say, isn't that the man from Springwatch? Someone else says, wasn't he once one of the goodies? Yeah, not anymore, now he's a baddie. Seconds later, carnage. Oddie is like a bearded Catherine wheel scithing through the crowd. Ironically, so the, the oligarchs wearing the leather jackets are protected from the worst of the blast, but a, an innocent couple from the northeast <laughs> on a city break are vaporised. Sorry, are you, are you asking me a specific question? Yes. And that question is... is if, if an RSPB yeah. neo-fundamentalist yeah. was radicalised yeah. Uh, Oddy uh, sacrificed himself. Yeah. And th the rest of them holed up in Wookie Hole and I was sent to neutralise the threat. Yeah. How would I proceed? Simples. Do you uh, really want to know? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Hand to hand combat, com commando style. Do you mind if I stand up? No, please. Take the floor. Take the floor. The floor is yours. You have right. the floor. So, in uh, Special Forces, we're, we're given licence to use bespoke techniques, improvised weaponry, that sort of thing. Uh, my favourite for hand-to-hand -hand combat is this brass knuckle which I've adapted. I've stuck a protruding blade on one side, very sharp. And what I would do is, I'd, uh, when I'd attack the first insurgent, punch him full in the face as hard as I could until I felt a splinter of bone, that his nose was truly shattered. And then, as he's toppling backwards, grab hold of him with your right hand and bring my hand back with the blade like an arc across his throat severing one or preferably both of the carotid arteries. It's, you've got to be careful here because you've got to avoid the squirt of the jet of blood because, you know, you don't want to be blinded moving on to the next fella. It's, it's quite weird, this, actually, because 
uh, if you get it right, the, the neck opens up, completely yawns back like a Muppet's mouth. Oh my God. So then you let them drop, <laughs> take care not to trip over them. I've seen that happen. And then you repeat and adapt, 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 until the cave is clear. It's very bloody, but it's quick and it's quiet. And that's why I like it. Any questions? No. Yeah, um, a witch muppet. You rejoin us on Mid Morning Matters, Tommy Gaskell, survival expert, still with us. And on lie two, we have Sophie. Sophie, what's your tongue twister? Did that man hurt the Muppets? No, love, he didn't hurt any Muppets. He simply dispatched um, some uh, terrorists from a radicalised RSPB in, in Wookiee Hole. Uh, it was simply that when he slit the throats of the bad people, they resembled the mouths of Muppets. Hope that answers you. Did they get better? We cleared the cave. No. No, no one survived, Sophie. He cleared the cave. And when the man hurt the other men, did the man feel bad? Did you feel bad? It's my job. No, he didn't feel bad, Sophie. Yesterday's quick-fire phone-in uh, only yielded three calls. My mistake. I think panel beating was uh, too narrow a topic. Uh, so today we're going to open it out uh, with the question, what is the best Thing. What's the best thing of all? Um, uh, we've, so far, we've got uh, Sky Plus, uh, a cup of Brazil nuts. That was amusing. Livestock, valid, and wet wipes. That was a, a fascinating uh, call from an elderly lady in Hempton. Let's have some more. Line two. The first smile of a newborn. Ah, who could not like that? Who could not like that, though? Uh, Herod. Yes, Herod. That's right, because he was a baby killer. He enjoyed... Yes, he killed lots of babies. He did. Uh, we don't like him. Uh, line four, Sean. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be your radio show, Alan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, I, don't, I have no need to... I can, you've saved me a lot of money on toilet paper now because you've already uh, done the job for me, <laughs> as, it, as, it, as it were. You uh, are slicker. Yeah, all right. Well, obviously, that's the implication, you know. Um, line six, uh, Stuart. It's sliced bread. What about sliced bread? <laughs> sliced bread, it's the best thing, isn't it? That's what people say. They say, it's well, the best thing. Uh, yeah, but that's, bread is. Well, that's a, that's a phrase, but it's not actually the best thing, is it? Can I have a T-shirt? No, no, of course you can't. It's the, that's, that's, um, that's, not, that's just a turn of phrase. Yeah, but it's, just, it's the best thing, isn't it? Because it's what people say in the it's thing. Not, they say, the best thing I know, is sliced I know, bread. I know they say that. I'm familiar with the phrase, but it's just a turn... It's not literally true. Then why do people say it? Of course because it's true. It's not... Sliced bread is the best thing. It's the best it's, thing. It's stop bread. Keep, if you keep saying it, sure, it's not going to make it any more we all, true. We all know the phrase, we mate. We all know the phrase. <laughs> it's just an idiom. You're an idiot. No, an idiom, not an idiot. You're, you're an, an idiot. No. You're, no, you're an idiot for not knowing what idiom is. It's clearly confused you because you think I've just substituted the T with, with, with an M. You stupid gim. <laughs> Uh, you, or you, you momal muam. Oh, what you got? Maybe that. Uh, you, yeah, you're, you're a complete cunm. Hmm. Well, I think you're a prick. Right, well. get rid of him. Sorry about that. Uh, I should have, I should have uh, knocked him off more quickly. I wasn't quick enough. I and a dick. Shit. Right. Um, right, well, he's, he's gone now, but I'll continue to, to, to speak my mind about him. Stuart, I've got to say, I think the Clifton Suspension Bridge was built for people like you. The fact that you can drive cars across it is a bonus, so do the decent thing. And leave the keys in your car so uh, someone can shift it afterwards. And please don't, don't call in saying I'm encouraging people to kill themselves. Again? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting that one person throw himself off Clifton Suspension Bridge because he is, and hopefully soon to be was, a very unpleasant individual. Uh, a bit like Jamiroquai. 